Good morning, folks. We've got a number of cool items to hit today. A solar flare, earthquake, and updates from space down to beneath our feet, and hitting the topic of catastrophe. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun mostly quiet. The solar wind is slightly variable, but Earth's magnetic field is handling it well. A C-class solar flare is about the top solar event of the day. It came from that northern group as the trailing sunspots gave their dying cry in decay. No CME produced. Let's go next to the Middle East. We've got a few dozen dead and a bevy of structural damage as a 5.9 earthquake struck shallow in Pakistan. The region does shake hard with the shallow ones, even under the magnitude 6 range. Up next, it's a fantastic look at the minutia of galactic magnetism. They're not only recognizing the role the galactic field plays in producing the radio arcs we see towards the core of the Milky Way, but the sickle-shaped ripple looks like a surge along the arc fields, like a wave of energy exciting the field as it travels along. What they label as NTS in the square, the slight bend in the arc if you can pick that out, that is a kink-like plasma instability and would never be in such a radio arc without an added energy source. Does the core surge pulses through the galactic fields? Looks like it. Up next, we're at Earth's magnetic field and its reverberations, the standing wave heartbeat that occurs when the sun delivers a whack to Earth's field. Shocking the scientists, they found that some of the peripheral waves to the sun-facing standing reverberation are moving against the solar wind, like butterfly strokes swimming against the current of a stream. This is step one in a complete rethink of the coupling point between the solar wind and the Earth system, and we'll come back to that concept in a moment as we break down and expand from our final story a mushy core. It turns out, data suggests that part of Earth's inner core is not so solid as has been believed for basically forever. There is a non-homogeneous nature to the core, and that should be expected, actually, given the previous story this year about its being lopsided. And if we recall another one from earlier in the year, this is where we'll connect back up to the top of the sky. The deep core conductivity is what ties that center of our world to the coupling point at the magnetosphere with the solar wind. This is why the decadal solar cycle explains the decadal variations in Earth's rotation, length of a day, and also why solar storms, the strong ones, make other anomalous rotation glitches in the Earth. And this even controls the paths of the geomagnetic pole reversal as they are guided by that system. Folks, they are learning more and more about the elements of Earth's disaster cycle, and they mostly cause them to rethink what they thought they knew, like the waves in the magnetosphere or the homogeneity of the core. It is very apparent from your questions in the comments section, many still aren't on the train. Any question you have on the magnetic field change, Earth's total conductive pathways, the solar micronova, past cycles of catastrophe, or the evidence across seven scientific disciplines, click that disaster cycle series link right below the video. It's almost time for the next major discovery update you are not going to want to be behind. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.